This is augmented matrices. Okay, augmented matrices. This is uh, section 8.1 in our Larson Math Analysis book. Okay, Math Analysis Honors. Um, it's called Gaussian, Jordan, Elimination. And it uses matrices. Uh, what's really nice is there's going to be a way that you're going to be able to take the matrix and use a graphing calculator sometimes and be able to solve an equation. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to do it by hand and then later we will also learn how to do it with a graphing calculator. Okay, so let me show you, I'm going to show you through an example. Let me show you example one. Okay, so um, say you have this equation. So 2x, you have a system of equations actually, 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17. And then you have x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. Let me move those over a little bit so you can see them better. This is x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. And then negative x plus 3y, uh, no z, equals negative 4. Okay, and we're going to try to solve this system. Now, somebody realized with how are we going to program this so a calculator could do it or a computer could do it. Something could do it besides us by hand. So uh, this process, that's the main purpose for the process, is somebody's going to have to be programming these calculators and these computers one day, and it's going to be you guys, okay? So if you're up this high in math, um, we're going to need you, okay? So um, we have to learn the process. We have to learn how it works. Um, this also works when, the, when there's 17 letters, okay? 17 letters, 5 letters, 3 letters, however many letters, this will still work. Okay, so the process will work, and then somebody, what they did is they programmed a calculator to be able to do it. So we have to know how to do it by hand. Um, there's always been two of these on the test, two or three, and then, um, but anyway, we'll see. Okay, so we don't know what test will be like this year, but we'll see. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, okay, and this is to save you from writing XYZ, 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 over and over and over again throughout this process. So what somebody realized is if we put it in something called an augmented matrix. Okay, augmented is this little dashed line where we're having a regular matrix and then we're kind of adding an extra column. So what you have is you have your X column. Okay, you have your X column. Those are the coefficients of the X. You have your Y column. Those are the coefficients of your Y. And then you have your z column. Those are the coefficients of your z. Now what would I put at the bottom one here? Would I put 1? Would I put 0? It's going to be 0. And then you put your constant matrix or your constant column Okay, at the end. Uh, one warning, let me erase this for a minute and show you something, is I used to do a dash line. But somehow my dashes, my long dashes, that's very much more dotted, but my long dashes sometimes look like numbers. And so uh, a couple times I accidentally thought something was like a 19, and then it really messed up the problem. So now I try to do a little more like dots instead of dashes. Okay. Um, you can see how it looks in the textbook, so you can see later how it looks. Okay, so um, what our plan is, Okay, and what the graphing calculator will do, so let me just tell you what a graphing calculator will do, and we'll, we're going to also do that this week too. So a graphing calculator will take this, uh, there's something called RF, okay, and I'll tell you what those letters stand for, and it gives you the answer. Okay, so this one, if I do it on the calculator, and we're going to learn how to do it on the calculator later. But on the calculator, it gets you directly to this answer. So let me show you what it gives you. 1, 1, 1 along the diagonals. And there's zeros everywhere else on this side. 
and then on the right side you get one negative one and two. Okay, so if you were taking the SAT or the SAT2 and you're allowed to use a calculator, uh, you could just type it in and I'll, I'll definitely show you how to do that, just not in this video. And then you get this answer. But let me show you the value, the reason why this is so helpful. And then I'm going to show you how to get it in this format. Okay, so what you would do is you would undo it. So if you look at this first row, see this yellow row? If we put the x's back in, that means 1x plus 0y plus 0z equals 1. So what does that really say? That really says x equals 1. And then look at the middle column. Okay, so the middle column is saying 0y, 0x plus 1y plus 0z equals negative 1, which really is saying y equals negative 1. So it gives you the answer for x, y, and z. And then um, I'll do another yellow. So my bottom yellow would be 0 plus 0 plus 1z equals 2. And z equals 2. So it's very interesting. And then your answer would be the coordinate. 1, negative 1, 2. And this would be your point. Okay, so this would be the point that would be the answer. And we could check it. Let's see if it works. Let's substitute it in and check if it works. So 2 times 1, 2. Minus 5 times negative 1, that's plus 5. So we're at 7 so far. Plus 10 is 17. So it does work in the first one. Does it work in the last one? Negative 1 plus negative 3 is negative 4. It does. In the middle one, 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 6 is 9. It does. So I just was substituting the numbers in in my head. Okay, so there is value to get it to look like this. Okay, so, but we have to have an aim and a plan so that we can make it like that by hand. Okay, so let me show you what the plan is. Okay, so right here, plan. And then I'm also going to tell you what order to go in. Okay, what order to go in. Um, the plan. Okay, the plan is... And uh, the plan doesn't always work, okay? But we're going to practice with the plan, and then sometimes you have to do a little change-up. Okay, the plan is first you want a 1 right there in the first row. So I'm going to call that 1 and circle it. Okay, then the plan is to zero out the column you're in. Now you're going to do that in one step. Both of those are done in one step, so I'm going to call both of those step 2. Okay, your next plan is in the next column, call it the red column, in the Y column. You're going to want a 1 right here in the diagonal. That's going to be step 3. And then you're going to zero out that column. Now you're going to zero out the bottom, and you're going to also zero out the top. And I'm going to teach you how to do this, but I just want to show you the order. So this is the plan. And then the final column Okay, is I need a 1 in this diagonal, in this corner. It's called the diagonal. I need a 1 in this corner. That's step 5. And then I'm going to zero out that column. And that's step 6. And then there's numbers here, but don't worry about those. You don't do anything with those. Okay, so this is the plan. Okay, and the order. So the 1 refers to step 1. The little 2 in the circle refers to step 2, and the numbers in the table are what I would like them to be, if possible. Okay, so let me show you um, some options, okay? So first of all, I don't know if you've ever seen these before. I know you've seen systems, 3x3 three three systems, 2x2 two two systems, but I don't know if you've seen the augmented matrices before. So I'm going to assume that you have not. Okay, so um, let's go back up to the original problem. Okay, with the X, Y's, and the Z's. Okay, so I don't want to write the X, Y's, and Z's, and that's why I write them with the augmented matrices, so I don't have to keep writing X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, like nine letters every single time that we do a step in the problem, and there's six steps. So basically, you'd have to write like nine times six, 54, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. So that's why we do it in this format. And then also so that we can train a computer to do it at a later time. Okay, so when you take a look at these, um, what things are allowed? 
or what way would you have solved it if it wasn't a, if it wasn't augmented matrices? So think about that. Would you use substitution? Would you use elimination? Would you use graphing? What would your plan be? So elimination, right? So what do we do with elimination? Don't we try to eliminate a letter? So that's what the zeros are going to be. The zeros are going to be eliminating letters. Now, what things are you allowed to do in elimination? Like if you look at the bottom two rows, what would you do with the bottom two rows if you were just doing straight elimination? You'd probably add them because the X's cancel. So the idea that those X's cancel, adding equations, is why we say that we're allowed to add rows. So one of the things you're allowed to do in this process is you're allowed to add rows. Okay, so you could add row, you know, row one plus row three. You can add row two plus row one. You can do things like that. Okay, what else can you do? What if you were looking at the first two, the 2x row and the second row with the x in the front? Do you remember how you would make the match? Weren't you allowed to multiply? So you can also multiply a row by, now are you allowed to multiply by anything? Are there any restrictions? So you are allowed to multiply by a row by a non-zero number. So you just can't multiply by zero. But why would we multiply by zero? That would be very strange anyway. Okay, so these are the main things. And then you can also combine them. So you could take row one and then add seven times row two. And that would make a new row. It's called a linear combination. We don't call it that very much in high school math. But you're allowed to do something like that. So you're allowed to manipulate rows. You can add one row to another. You can multiply by a row. Okay, so that's going to be our plan with these augmented matrices. Okay, so let me zoom out. And let me write this. I'm going to write this matrix again down below so you can see it. You should write it down below too. Okay, and then I'm going to move it up. 2, 3, 9, negative 1, 3, 0, negative 4. Okay, so I'm going to move this up. And then look at our plan. We'll have to go back and look at our plan every, uh, every once in a while. Okay, so the first thing I want to see is to do the step 1, step 3, step 5. Okay, usually you're going to divide to get the one. Okay, so usually you're gonna divide to get the one, not the zeros, but to get the one. Occasionally, you're gonna switch rows. Or switch rows and divide. or combine rows, but that's more rare. So let's talk about the first row. How could I get there to be a one in the first row, not using any other row, just looking only at the first row? So I would divide by two. The only problem with dividing by two is I'm gonna get a fraction and I'm gonna have to deal with fractions throughout the whole rest of the process. So my plan would be fractions are allowed but they're annoying, so it would be better to not worry about the fraction. Okay, so let me show you what my plan's gonna be. I'm looking at the row two and thinking, row two would be better on the top because I want a one there. Or maybe row three would be better at the top and I could multiply by negative one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put here old row two. Now I put that in the first column, I mean the first row, Okay, so I'm going to put the row 2 as my new top row. Well, that means I need to put the top row somewhere. So I might as well just put the top row here. So old row 1, 2, negative 5, 5, 17. 
and then uh, I'm going to put keep row three so I didn't do anything to it. Okay. Now let me show you where to focus. So next, now let's see what we did first. We did uh, this step, right? We got the one. So now our plan is to get these zeros. Okay, so to get those zeros, what you're going to do is you are going to use the one that you just got. So I'm going to circle it. Uh, one professor in college, uh, in my college class, called it the pivot row. So row one here is the pivot row. Okay, row one. And then the labels on the left side that I'm making right here, these labels, I no longer have to look at once you do the operations. Okay. So for my next group here, okay, so for my next one, I do want to keep my pivot row. So the one that you just got, the one, the number one that you just got, you're going to write that again. And we need a plan, and then later we can sometimes go out of order, but, um, but not very often. Okay, so now the second one. So I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. I'm trying to make that two become a zero using the top row, my pivot row. So how can I make a two into a zero by elimination? What would you do to row one? So I'm thinking, how would I use row one to get myself a zero? And we're going to use row one in all three of them. Once you get the one in the corner, uh, the one in the diagonal, you use that row to help you get rid of the numbers below and above it. Okay. So how are you going to get rid of a two? So my suggestion would be if I multiplied this top row, which I'm going to highlight it in yellow, I'm going to multiply that top row by negative 2 because this is a positive 2. So if I multiply the top row by a negative 2 and I add it, then I'm going to zero, get a 0 in that position. So you're going to multiply row 1 by negative 2. And then you can add it to row 2, the old row 2. And that should give me a 0. Now, um, it's very frequent that people make mistakes with calculations, so I'm going to write it off to the side. So what I'm doing is I'm using my finger, uh, which you can't see, but I'm using my finger to touch the whole yellow row, the long yellow row, and I'm trying to multiply that row by 2. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. That's because I'm multiplying row 1 by negative two. And then, that's this part right here. And then it says add row two. So I'm gonna put the old row two right here. So this is row two, and this is negative two times row one, and then I'm gonna add them. So that's zero, negative one, negative one, negative one. And I'm gonna put that right here. Zero, negative one, negative one, negative one. Now I'm going to still look at this top row. Still going to use that, but now I need to get rid of this negative one. So I think if I just added the first row and the third row, wouldn't just adding the first row and the third row, R3 plus R1, wouldn't that give me a zero in this position? I'm trying to get a zero here. I think it would, so I'm going to put zero. And now I'm adding the green and the blue. Okay, so I'm adding the green and the blue. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 3 plus 0 is 3. 9 plus negative 5 and negative 4 is 5. So I have my 1. I have my 0. I have my 0. Now I'm working on the second row, the second column. Okay, so the second column is this column. The second column is negative 2, negative 1, and 1. Now, my focus at the beginning is this row right here. That number along the diagonal is supposed to be a 1. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to take that row, which is called row two, because it's the row two of the matrix above. This is called augmented matrix. I'm going to take that row two, and how can I make a negative one into a one? How about I multiply it by negative one? Or divide. Zero, one, one, one. So now I have my one I want. And then this, I'm going to keep row one, and I'm going to keep row three. So keep just means copy it over and try not to make a mistake while you're copying. Okay. Now the one I just got, this is step, this really was step up here, this was step one. This plan was step two, and then this plan was step three. Oops, I wrote plan instead of step. So this was step three. And then this one is going to be step four. Okay. So step four said to take this negative two and this one, and I want those to become zeros. Now, I want them to become zeros, and I'm using the row I just made. The one I just made, I'm going to use that to get a zero. It's a little confusing the first time you ever see it. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite that one. You always keep the row you just found, so that was keep row two. So here's my number. I probably don't need that circle because we're looking at the rows above. Okay, now how am I going to use this one? right here, my green one. How am I gonna use my green one to get rid of this negative two? So what would you have to do to row two? So row two's coefficient, if I made that one, that green one, into a positive two and added it to the negative two, that's how I'm gonna get zero. So you always multiply by the opposite of what you're trying to get rid of. Then I'm going to add row one. And let's see if we're effective. So row one was one, negative two, three, and nine. And then positive two times row two would be zero. I'm looking at the yellow row, multiplying it by two. Two, two, two. Then when I add those, I get my zero that I want. So I do get my one. Now one's fine because I remember I wanted a one there. I wanted my zero there. I just got it. 5 and then 11. Now how can you get the, this one here at the bottom, what I boxed in yellow? How can I make that into a zero using the green one? So I'm thinking if I take row 2 and subtract row 3, that would give me a zero. So 0, 0, negative two, I'm subtracting the yellow row minus the blue row. Okay, so the yellow row minus the blue row. So I'm subtracting one by one. Uh, one minus five is negative four. So I have my two zeros, I have my one, I have my one, my two zeros. So we're moving right along, we've done six steps so far. I have four steps so far, but six numbers. Now what's next? So what you're doing is you're aiming down this diagonal and you're trying to get ones. Okay, so this middle diagonal is supposed to be getting ones. First the one, then you zero out the column. Okay, so what does my negative two need to become? Okay, so what does my negative two need to become? So if you look back at our, at our plan, we're supposed to have a one in that spot. So how am I gonna get a negative two to be a one? Now this is the first time we've actually done it in the standard way. The standard way is actually by division. So my, my new row three is my old row three divided by negative two. So zero, zero, one, positive two. 
and then you're going to keep the other rows. Uh, on your step, on your odd steps where you're trying to get the ones, you, you, you keep the rows you're not working on. And you just need to label for your teacher because we have to check 60, 90 of these. You know, on, on a test you only have to do two or three, but we have to grade so many. Okay, so you definitely want to write those keeps. So that means we don't have to look at it. And it's also good information for you. Okay, so step six, and this is the last step before we solve the question, basically, is I need to get, so the one, I'm going to circle the one. So we have the one, and I need to use that one to make the numbers above and below it to be zero. So I need to make those zero. Now some of you are probably getting the hang of it, and some of you are going to need definitely need another example to get the hang of it. Okay, so um, you keep the row that you just made in the previous step. So I'm going to keep row three. Okay, so I'm going to keep that row. Okay, and you're going to use this row, the one with the one you just got, in order to zero out the five and the one in the columns above. So the way that it does work is, and I'll write this on the left, is you're always multiplying something by the row you just found and then you're adding it to the row that you're on. So when I'm on row one, I want to add some multiple of R3. And when I'm on row two, I want to add some multiple of R3. R2 plus some multiple of R3. So how are you going to make a one cancel out a five? Well, you're going to have to make it a negative 5. So in this top row, I'd like to multiply by negative 5 to get rid of the 5. And then to get rid of the 1, you're going to multiply by negative 1. You really always multiply by the opposite of those red underlined numbers. Okay. I usually do the work on the side, otherwise I often miss it. So this is 1, 0, 5, 11. And then it says multiply row 3 by negative 5. So 0, 0, that's the yellow row, by negative 5. So negative 5 and negative 10. So this is row 1. This is negative 5 times row 3. 1, 0, 0, 1. 1, 0, 0, 1. So in row 1, that's my new row 1. My row 2 says row 1 plus negative 1 times row 3. If I just subtracted, I would have just subtracted, but since I did write it as a multiply, I probably will write it out. Row, the old row 2 was 0, 1, 1, 1, and then negative 1 times row 3 would be 0, 0, negative 1, negative 2. And then you add, you get 0, 1, 0, negative 1. 0, 1, 0, negative 1. And then that was the answer I told you that your calculator would give you directly. So we change it back into x's. So this first, uh, I'll underline in red so you can see it, the x here, that's 1x. So in red, that's 1x equals 1. And then the blue, that's 1y equals negative 1. And then the green is 1z equals 2. And then you write this, but usually we write it as a coordinate. And you do alphabetical order, X, Y, Z. And then that works in the original. Okay, the plan is not to do this all the time. The plan is to know how to do it, to make it so I can use it on a calculator. But also there are some questions that can't be solved by straight elimination and have to be solved by augmented matrices. There's other ways where you try to get, you, you end up getting lost in a regular system of three. So we need to know how to do it. It's called augmented matrices. The augmented matrix is any of these matrices that have the little dashed line and the numbers to the right. Um, a little review of matrices. Okay, so a, a little review of matrices. Say you have this with no dashes. Okay, two, nine, four. Uh, what size is this? What dimensions is this? Because that's definitely a question that they're going to ask you. 
Um, sometimes they'll call it the order of the matrix. I haven't heard it that called it that much, but that's what it's called in our book. So what are the dimensions of the matrix? Dimensions, I lost my guess. Dimensions of the matrix, I guess, is called the order, according to our textbook. So dimensions, you do rows by columns. Okay, that's the word columns. Let me spell that better for you. So that is columns. Okay, so this is a row. This is row one. This is row two. And this is called column one, column two, column three, column four. So I had already made this video, and then I don't know why my tablet didn't record it, the end of this video. So anyway, so I want to show you some things. Um, I'll just point them out, and we'll see how this goes. Much rather have a video where I'm, I'm talking to you as I go through, but I don't know what happened. Okay, so um, this is called an augmented matrix. Okay, because of the line, the little dashed lines. Uh, you can change that into this, which is called a system of equations. Okay, and then you can go back and forth. Okay, depending on what the question asks you. There's some questions at the very beginning of this lesson that are like that. Okay, the next thing is that you have a 2x2 two two system. Now in a 2x2 two two system like this, definitely solving it by elimination would have been better, but we're trying to practice this new method, and it's easier to practice it with only uh, two equations compared to three equations. So I think you'll prefer this. Okay, so let me show you what happens. Okay, so I wrote it in augmented matrix form. Okay, so you write it in augmented matrix form. And my plan is once along the diagonals, and then zero above and below. And then see that five that I boxed? See that five that I boxed? I want it to be a one. So how am I going to make it a one? Well, the standard way would be to divide row one divided by five. So that's what I did next. Row one divided by five. So I just divided all the numbers by 5. And then I kept the second row. So I kept it the same because we're not doing anything with it. It's funny, I don't know how long to pause. Like if I was using a PowerPoint. You know, I don't know how long it takes you to write stuff down. Anyway. So then I circled the 1. And I highlighted the row because I'm going to want to use the 1 to get rid of the 4. Okay, so I'm going to use the 1 to get rid of the 4. So what I'm going to do in the next plan is to remove the 4, I'm going to take the old row 2 and multiply, uh, add it to negative 4 times row 1. And that will get me a 0. So let me show you what I did here. So over here, I wrote keep row 1, and then for my row 2, I took row 2, and I needed to multiply it by negative 4 times row 1. So let me erase this blue part. Erase it so you could see it. Okay, so what I did over here is I multiplied by row, I, I just rewrote row 2 just as it was. And then I multiplied this top row by negative 4. Then I added them. I feel like I should erase. Let me erase and just do it again. Otherwise, it's not going to make any sense to you. I really don't think it makes a lot of sense if you don't do it dynamic. 
if you just copied a video. Okay, so let's see. So ignore the stuff on the right for right now. That's just my calculations. Okay, so um, what we did is we took row two. We were adding negative four row one. Okay, that's the blue for right now. I added them and I got this. Then I have to put this where I wanted it. So that would be zero, negative 27 fifths, and negative 3 fifths. I was low on batteries, so I wonder if that's why. And my timer wasn't going, so I was thinking, I wonder if it's videoing, but it was just sitting there. It looked like it was videoing. Anyway. Okay. So I did get my zero that I wanted. Okay. And then the idea is the next thing to get is I need to make the next diagonal a zero. So I want to make this negative 27 fifths zero. So how am I going to make that zero? So I'm just concentrating on the bottom row. So I'm going to take row two and divide it by that number. That's usually what you write it like. Usually you divide. But really, that would be row 2 times negative 5 over 27. So then I'm going to distribute that row, this blue row right here, and I'm going to multiply through by negative, by negative 5 over 27. Okay, so that would be 1 and then 1 ninth. I did the calculation over here, if you want to see it. And then I'm going to keep row 1, because I didn't do anything to change it. So first I did this, check. Second I got the 0, check. Third I do the next diagonal, check. And then I have to 0 the whole column. So this red 2 fifths is now supposed to be a 0. Okay, so what I wrote over here on the left side Okay, so on this left side, okay, I keep my one, my pivot row, I'm going to highlight that for you. So I keep my pivot row, so I just rewrite that one, zero, one, and one ninth. And then I use the one in the yellow row to try to get rid of the two fists. So to get rid of a two fists, I'm going to multiply by negative two fists. So negative two-fifths times R2. Okay, so if you look over here on the right side, I have R1 that I just rewrote. And that's R1 from the previous line. Okay. And then what I did is I took row two and multiplied it by negative two-fifths. And then I added them. And then when I added them, I got what's in the yellow box. And then that's what I put here. 1, 0, 106 over 45. And then, the, let's see what color I coded that one. Okay, so then the x is 1x equals 105, 106 over 45. So x equals 106 over 45. And then y is 1 ninth. That's this. And then that's the answer. So it's good to practice with the 2 by 2. Um, you're going to practice 65, 66, 67, 68. It's only odds though. So I guess you're going to practice 65 and 66 and that is all I would recommend. But then for the 3 by 3s you're going to want to practice 69 and 70. 71 is a kooky one. So I would say practice 69 and 70 instead of 71, which is on the assignment. But two of those are not going to make you an expert. So you'll want to re-practice the one in the notes as well. And then we'll probably have some more for you to practice later. Okay, let me show you the next thing. Okay, so let me erase some of this, my color coding. But I like my questions. Okay, let me erase this for you, and then I'll show you what all that is. I told you I did the video, I just don't know what happened. Um, it said it was zero minutes, and it said zero minutes, and it said, what else did it say? Oh, when I tried to open it, it said like fatal error, so that doesn't sound very good. And this is actually the end. 
this is going to be the end of the video as soon as we do these two. Okay, so um, we have these two. They look the same. Okay, they look the same at the moment. Okay, so the only difference is that one number. Now notice there's a problem. They don't look like we wanted them to. We wanted them along the whole diagonal, this yellow diagonal. We wanted those to be all ones. And that zero messed things up. So when the zero messes things up, you have a problem and you have to, uh, it's not the same. Okay. So you can't get it to be a one. It's impossible. Okay. So for this one, uh, let's say this one's a four. Let's say this one's a zero. So they're really different answers. And let me show you when I notice that there's a row of zeros. So the blue row is just zeros. When I notice there's a row of zeros and then a number on the right or a row of zeros, like in the right one with zero on the right, um, I know that I have to look at that row first. So you're going to look at that row first. So this means 0x, 0y, 0z equals 4. So that's 0 equals 4. So what does 0 equals 4 in math mean? Well, that means no solution. Okay, so 0 equals 4 means no solution. Now on this one, you have 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 0. 0 equals 0. Well, 0 equals 0 doesn't mean no solution. It means infinite number of solutions, usually. So this one's totally different. So when you see the 0 equals 0, that's true, and then you really don't know what to write. So there's a whole system of what you do. You try to figure out which is your, uh, your messed up column, okay, your problem column. So in this case, it's Z. Z is where I couldn't get there to be a 1. So what you do is you write let, and I'm going to show you the method of chapter 12 when it's used. Okay, so I don't want to show you a method in chapter 8, and then when we get to chapter 12, which we're going to do next, then I have to show you a different method. I'm just going to show you chapter 12's method first, and then I'll show you how to be able to read chapter 8's method. It's not the method, it's just the answer at the end. Okay, so um, you're going to let the problem column, which is Z, equals T. And then you're going to rewrite each equation with the x's. So uh, this top equation is x plus 6z equals 3. The second equation is y, because uh, that one is in the second column, right? Because the x column, the y column, z column. Uh, y plus 5z equals t equals 2. Now, I usually don't write this. What I write, and I'll write this down here, what I write is I write x plus 6, and then I'm thinking to write z, but I already wrote z equals t, so I just put a t in there instead, equals 3. And then I usually just write 5, uh, y plus, and there's a 5 there, 5z, five but I think, oh, but I said z was t, equals 2. And then your final answer in chapter 12, you would write x equals y equals z equals... Uh, you'll remember that from parametric. That was a parametric section that we did in a previous, in a previous chapter. So 3 minus 6t, that's x. And it is important to put the number first, okay? Uh, 2 minus 5t, you put the t second, you put the constants first. And z was t, remember that's what you let z be. And this is your answer. Now this is uh, parametric. And later in chapter 12, you're going to learn that this is a 3D line. And actually, your first equations, the original equations with the x, y, and z, those are planes. So in chapter 12, uh, actually, it's not chapter 12, it's chapter 11. In chapter 11, um, the equations that you're given are called planes, and then you want to know where the planes intersect. And the planes intersect sometimes in a line, and that's what this case is. And then the no solution means the three planes don't intersect. And then at the very, very top, up here, where we had an answer, uh, 1, negative 1, and 2, uh, that means the three planes intersect in a point. So it's kind of cool. But you'll see that when we do, um, when we do chapter 11. Uh, let's see. OK. So what would be best is if you try, OK, is if you try the homework.
Okay, so try the homework. Um, the first part's going to make a whole lot of sense. You're going to get to 65 and you're going to feel a little stressed because they're the ones that are the whole six steps, or in this case it's four steps, example two. Two of them are going to look like this one, 65 and 67, and then 69 and 70, because I'm going to have you do 70 instead of 71. But 69 and 70 are like the first example. Okay, so like the first example. And you're going to see how you do with it. Okay, and if you get stuck, um, you, can, you can post a message in the assignment uh, on Google Classroom because um, I'll be able to look at it and comment on it. So if you want to send me one of your questions, 69 or 70, or your teacher, we could find out where your error is. And then we can see um, what you're doing from there. You might want to re-practice example one uh, by yourself before you do 69 and 70. So you might get a little stuck. And we definitely need to have you practice more than two questions or you're not going to become an expert. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, I will post it very soon. I just need to tie the three videos together because I was also having trouble with... Um, with, I don't know, hitting stop or something. But anyway, so um, it's good. Uh, please talk to your teacher if you're stuck anywhere, okay?